In the year 2010, when the Water Resources Commission embarked on a public education campaign, the Pra River Basin was significantly featured. At that time, the process towards setting up a basin board and its secretariat as the decentralized management body to facilitate the implementation of Integrated Water Resources Management IWRM was already in place. The IWRM approach is to promote the coordinated development and management of water, land and related resources in order to maximize the resultant economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainability of vital ecosystems. The Pra Basin Board of the Water Resources Commission has since been set up and is represented by 17 stakeholders with various backgrounds who bring their positions and expertise to bear in addressing the challenges faced by the basin. Dr. Kwabna Kankam Yabwa of the Water Research Institute chairs the board. Uh, formally, we'll be uh, managing rivers and water bodies according to administrative regions. So if, uh, for example, a river like Pra is passing through Ashanti region, it will be managed as Ashanti region Pra. So in terms of integrated water resource management, we are doing a basin-based management. And for the Pra, which has some challenges, uh, we're managing it according to, because the Pra, when you say Pra, is often from one side of it, the Birim is also one side before they join like a triangle and flow towards the sea. So we are catering for the Pra, the often arm of the Pra. And the often arm of the Pra is basically in Ashanti region before it goes through central regions to join the sea. So most members are from the often arm, the districts and then the government agencies and NGOs that are within the often basin, often river. Our task is to manage the water. Today, the Pra or Fin Basin Secretariat is in place with its offices located in the Ashanti Regional Capital of Kumasi. Mrs. Abna Dufi Redu Breman is the Basin Officer. The main objective of setting up this Secretariat is to manage and regulate water resources within this basin. Once we have an office in Kumasi, it makes us very visible in Kumasi because in the past, everything was done from Accra and it's really difficult to regulate and manage water resources when you are not close to the resource. So it's very good that we have the office close to the resource. Most of the challenges that we are having is compliance. Um, people are too used to some of the old ways that they were doing things, so it's very difficult getting them to change from some of their old ways and complying to the water resources rules. When we come to Kumasi, you see people building in waterways. You see people throwing rubbish in the rivers. All the rivers in Kumasi, I can say, are polluted because they are in the urban areas. Most of them consider them as large gutters. Once they introduce the channel, people see them as large gutters and they throw rubbish in them. Mr. Yawating Opoku knows the length and breadth of the basin, especially in Ashanti. During the course of his work, Yawating has identified various hot spots that threaten the very survival of the Pra River Basin. Knowledge about these hot spots also means having an adequate idea about mitigating these challenges. Our first stop is the wood village at Sokobang, a suburb of Kumasi. This is a collection of water bodies within the Kumasi metropolis, naming the Sisa, the Daban River and the Abuabo, including the Subin. They all come here to join, then enters the Oda at Asago. The main activities going on here is woodwork, where lumber is being produced. And those of cast, mainly the sawdust from the which serves as the end product of the production of lumber. When it rains, it drains directly into the water body. Some of the wood products are very poisonous. And this order is a main source of river for the people at Bekwai and its environs. And looking at the source of poison being poured here, it will affect the cost of producing water at that end. There are a lot of developments directly within the buffer zone. There is this unnamed wood industry, which is situated within the buffer zone of the 
this water collection of these water bodies that we are talking of and once it's within the buffer zone all the effluent from that industry will definitely drain directly into the water body which will have its effect on those people who will be drinking from this water body users of water upstream must be careful what they do because it directly affects what happens downstream Ajua Munkwa Dakon is the Public Relations Officer of the Water Resources Commission. She describes the out-of-sight, out-of-mind attitude of a Ghanaian. As Ghanaians, we always like the easy way of doing things. So straight away, we just take whatever and dump it in water. Because we know that it will go away. The water will just clean up, take it away, and then that's it. You know, and these are some of the challenges that we face. Whatever we are doing to a water body upstream is affecting somebody downstream. So we need to change our attitudes towards how we relate to our water resources. Because whatever you do at any point in time affects somebody in one way or the other. The detrimental activity around the wood village, which is upstream, has a direct impact on the people who live in Asao, a community downstream. Kofi is a steel bender and an aspiring footballer. He recounts with nostalgia how he used to drink from and swim in this river. Today, none of what Kofi could do on the river during his childhood is possible. The water is now heavily polluted and discolored. Fishes, if existent at all, would have to compete with plastic waste and other pollutants for survival. One policy intended to protect water resources around the country is the National Buffer Zone Policy. It prescribes a distance approximately 100 meters from our river and other water bodies if there should be any activity such as farming, building and construction, etc. But in most parts of the Pra River, this is not the case. Farming along the banks and the use of chemicals are common even in a major city such as Kumasi. Car washing bays are now littered very close. Buildings so close to catchment areas are a common occurrence and in some cases they are directly on the waterway. Some of these include schools, churches and private property. It is done with so much impunity and in some cases, walls are even built to divert the waterway, often with serious consequences, including flooding. Katachie Miracle Worship Center is bustling with activity, even though it's not a Sunday. One would think that the building of a house of God would first be premised on whether or not it is built at the right place and whether or not permit is secured from city authorities for such a purpose. Clearly, this was not the case. The church is built too close to one of the catchments of the river of Finn, and this footage shows quite clearly that the proximity is far less than the 100 meters prescribed by the law. It is also evident that clear natural warnings of flooding exist, but such warnings go unheeded even to men who claim to hear directly from God. Buildings are so close to the catchment area, and there's evidence of people using the river as a point of refuse disposal and even human waste disposal points are built so close to the water bodies that the river cannot escape pollution from human excreta. One very important national collaborator of the Water Resources Commission is the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. They are so familiar with these challenges faced by our water bodies. No matter what we do with respect to controlling pollution at various hotspots, you still have a lot of problems with effluents that are discharged from our domestic homes. Those are not controlled. 
with the exception of few areas that uh, we have a central sewage system. Most of these things come from our homes that are not treated, which eventually end up in our water resources. Abuabo is another hotspot that was identified by Yao Boateng Upoku. It is a very sad story and has a telling effect on the behavior of the human being when no one is watching. The issue of pollution permeates the eyes and nostrils of any passerby. The fact that kids can be seen openly defecating into the river tells us what examples have been set by their adult parents and guardians. Barikesi, a 35.5 million cubic meter dam is the main supplier of potable drinking water to the whole Kumasi metropolis. Its catchment spans an area of 902 square kilometers. It is an integral part of the Pra River Basin, as it can be found on the River of Finn. Apart from siltation of the Barikesi Dam, several other activities are hindering the dam from operating at full capacity. The desired capacity is supposed to do 48 million cubic meters of water. But Kumasi, as we speak, the demand of water is about 40 million and over. But we cannot meet that demand. So there's an urgent need to dredge the dam. And more so, the important aspect is that we continue to ward off the, those illegal felling of trees in the catchment area. We have a challenge with the pollution, and that challenge is upstream. We have farming activities going on upstream. These farming activities, uh, they use uh, chemicals, fertilizer, and all those weedy sites and the like to, on their farms. Now when it rains, during the rainy season, all these are washed into the dam. So when it happens that way, then we need to use a lot of chemicals to treat the water before the water becomes portable, before the water becomes wholesome, before the water meets the WHO standard and Ghana water standards as well. So this is the challenge we have. The OAB headworks from the Ghana Water Company Limited also utilizes the water resource from the Pra Basin. Angela introduces us to the facility and talks about some challenges. You are currently at Ghana Water Company Limited, or Wabi Head West, where we treat water for Ebuakwa and beyond. Some of the communities from Esanse, um, Ekropon, Ebuakwa, Koforidua, Tanosu, and Nkariye, and beyond. Basically, the Wabi River is highly polluted. But there are streams and rivers which flow into the Wabi stream, into the dam. So if these, these uh, small streams are polluted, exactly the dam is also going to be polluted. Ghanaians generally listen to traditional authority. As such, the involvement of traditional authority is key if the policy of integrated water resource management must succeed. Nana Kweku Kunedu is a traditional leader of Ofenso Asumankuma in the Ashanti region. He was installed by Nana Abankure, the chief of Ofin, and handed the responsibility of keeping pure the water that runs in the Ofin River. According to Nana, he communicates with the river and can tell us what Ofin likes and does not like. <laughs> Call them Ofin Water Guards, and you may not be wrong. Nanakwe Kukunedu has asked these young men to take us to the riverside and show us evidence of how well traditional authority is able to keep the water clean. Clearly, this community reveres its water, and the young men show us how safe it is to dip a hand in and take a drink. This is an example that every Ghanaian must learn from. Lake Busumchi is a natural lake that stands out as a prominent protected area. Scientists proclaim it was created as a result of a meteoritic impact and has become an object of intense interest to both national and international researchers. 
The lake is also a source of livelihood for the people who live around it. They fish from the lake. They harvest drinking water from the lake. They use the lake for recreational purposes. Boat operators rely on the tourism activities around the lake and make money by giving tourists boat rides. Even the district assembly has part of its revenue generation coming from Lake Bosumchi. Veronica recounts. So it had been a tourist center for the whole Ghana. And even I can say the whole world because people from outside Ghana also visit the lake. The district assembly also is benefiting from the lake because we give it out for hiring. And when people come during uh, holidays or uh, public holidays, they contact us. We carry them a little amount for our income generating fund. And then they go there and make a merriment. Some even come there to celebrate their lives. It is the more reason why the people who live around the lake must take special interest in preserving it. Nanajima Nkudum is the traditional head of Abo, the community that hosts Lake Bosumchi. <laughs> Miss Veronica in JJ adds a voice to that of Nanajimai. I think if anything happens to the lake at all, we are not experiencing a uh, bumper catch of the fish here. Maybe it, it may be due to all this. So we should, we should not watch in the lake. But we don't take to the advice. My advice to my people is that they should ad, uh, adhere to the advice and then take it as the only natural lake in Ghana and treat it as a very important lake so that at, uh, at the end of the day it may not get Beatrice Kwating is the district planning officer for Bosumchi District Assembly. She is a member of the Pra Basin Board and comes face to face with developers who are into a fishing practice that is destroying the lake. We realize that we've had some developers on the lake Bosumchi. Uh, they are into fishing. They are doing some sort of fishing on it. And as we are all aware, the lake is, uh, doesn't have any inflow or outflow. It's a stagnant water resource. That's the key point. It has no outlet. And for cage culture or cage fishing, the feed has a lot of chemicals. And not all the feed will be consumed by the fish. So the leftovers will definitely settle. And that is a source of pollution to the lake. And because it does not drain, it does not self-cleanse itself. Okay. So all the waste material is deposited in the lake. It does not go anywhere, so it increases the level of pollution. Simply, that's the issue. This practice of caged fishing on Lake Bosumche has become a major headache for the Water Resources Commission. Mr. Ben Ampuma, Executive Secretary of the Water Resources Commission, explains. Uh, the Commission has made this position clear that it's an illegal uh, adventure. And uh, we've taken a lot of uh, studies, uh, samples, uh, we looked at the quality, and obviously it's deteriorating. So um, we've developed a position to ensure that the operator decommissions the, the venture that he has put up uh, to harvest whatever fish that he has in there 
and also take up the structure. But we have suggested some potential and safe places that he could relocate to. Lake Busumchi must survive and everyone must come on board to achieve this. As evidence of small-scale mining in the Praia River Basin, Dr. Bob Alpha is the head of the Surface Water Unit and in charge of surface water development. The Praia has been seriously impacted by the operations of uh, illegal small-scale mining activities. Leftover pits have become death traps, leaving gaping holes that beg for filling. If we leave it for so long, we will win the uh, war against Galamsey, but the impact would have been so devastating. It will take us so many years, and the impact on human life and the environment will have been so great that recovery will take a long period of time. Uh, we have no choice than to win this war, but we have to win it now. Where there's a community that there is illegal mining going on, it's the responsibility of the people in the community, the chiefs, the people, to protect the water resources together with us. And so they should give us the information and assist us when we come there to solve these problems, to keep these problems, because these resources are for all of us, for the present generation, for the future generation. So with all these challenges, how does the Basin Board and Secretariat intend to succeed? I am a member of the Public Awareness and Education Committee. So we have had um, uh, programs on about three or four FM stations trying to educate the public about the importance of water and what as individuals they can do to help improve our water. Normally people take things for granted when it comes to issues of the environment. And for this matter, the water. People should realize that water is life, and without water, there is no life. And therefore, issues about water must be taken seriously by every individual. And once we are able to look at it from that perspective, then it's going to be a plus for our country, health-wise and economy-wise. We must continue protecting our water bodies. We must respect them. We must give meaning to the saying that water is life. Because without water, when you take air, water is the next thing that man depends on. So let's give meaning to that saying that water is life. History and experience tells us that um, uh, during the olden days, our chiefs, our elders, always built and then had their villages along rivers. Uh, why? Because they saw that rivers, the source of water from rivers is very essential to human life. And they made sure that every stream or lake or river within which uh, the uh, region was, was sacred. Why? Because uh, if you temper with the raw water and it stinks, we are doomed. So what we have to do is normally to make sure that we protect and prevent people from polluting our uh, water sources. So as a chief, what I will tell my, my subjects is that water is very important. Water is life. And we don't get water from elsewhere. It rains, but it gathers on the ground and seeps into our rivers and, and water bodies. If you kill our water bodies, we kill water. If you kill water, our lives is dead. The Water Resources Commission, with all these challenges, has now put in place a Basin Secretariat with permanent staff to execute plans put in place by the Pra Basin Board. It is not an easy task when it involves change, attitude and behaviour. But the constitution of a Basin Board and Secretariat is the first step that will take us to the end of that thousand-mile journey. <laughs>